microorganisms and diseases tiny organisms numerous tiny organisms are found in soil water and air they are so small that we cannot see them with unaided eye we can see them only with the help of a microscope these organisms are called microorganisms or microbes. Microorganisms are either one celled organisms or a collection of undifferentiated cells that is, colonial. Microorganisms may be autotrophs, heterotrophs, saprophytic, or parasitic. Habitat of microorganisms. 1. In favorable conditions. Microorganisms are found everywhere and in all types of environment. They can exist in extreme conditions of temperature and drought. They can be found in air, soil of various types, including soil of deserts and marshy lands, water, including hot spring water, salty sea water and ice-cold water on the poles, dead and decaying organic matter, inside as well as on the surface of the body of animals, including humans. In unfavorable conditions. During unfavorable conditions, the microorganisms enclose themselves in a hard, resistant covering called the cyst. When environmental conditions become favorable, the cyst ruptures and the microorganisms come out and multiply. Some microorganisms grow on other organisms, while others exist freely. Microorganisms like amoeba can live alone, while fungi and bacteria may live in colonies. There are thousands of varieties of microorganisms. Microorganisms are mainly classified into five major groups. They are Bacteria, protozoa, algae, fungi, and viruses. Conditions for growth of microorganisms. Microorganisms form the most diversified and widely distributed group of living organisms. They exist almost everywhere. Therefore, their requirements for proper growth are also different. They require 1. A suitable medium which may be air, water, soil, dead and decaying organic matter or a suitable host. 2. A suitable temperature ranging between 25 degrees Celsius to 35 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, most microorganisms have maximum growth rate. Below this growth rate declines, and above this, microorganisms are killed. 3. Moisture for germination of spores and their growth. 4. Ample supply of food for growth and multiplication. And 5. Ample sunlight is also required for photosynthetic microorganisms. Bacteria Occurrence of bacteria Of all the microorganisms, bacteria are the most abundant. They are the simplest of all living organisms. Bacteria occur almost everywhere on earth, in the air, in water, in soil, in food products, and also 
in the bodies of other organisms. Shapes of Bacteria Rod-shaped bacteria are bacillus or bacilli. They have one or more flagella. They are useful and harmful both. Bacillus typhosis causes typhoid fever and lactobacillus bacteria help in setting of curd from milk. Spherical shaped bacteria are cocci or coccus found in pairs that is diplococcus in chains streptococcus and in groups cephalococcus. Spiral shaped bacteria are spirilla or spirillum. They cause a disease known as treponema. Comma shaped bacteria are vibrio. Vibrio cholerae causes cholera. Structure of bacteria. Bacteria are unicellular. Their cell wall is made up of protein-like material. The cell wall of bacteria is surrounded by a gelatinous capsule. The cell cytoplasm is without endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, plastids, Golgi bodies and lysosomes. Their hereditary material is DNA which forms a single circular chromosome that lies naked in the cytoplasm. Bacteria do not have nucleus, nucleolus and chromatin material. The nuclear membrane is also absent. Glycogen is the reserve food in bacteria. Many rod-shaped bacteria have one or more flagella. Nutrition in bacteria Most bacteria cannot make their own food. However, some are autotrophic. That is, they prepare their food by a process similar to photosynthesis. Some bacteria obtain their nutrition from dead and decaying organic matter. Such bacteria are called saprophytic bacteria. Some bacteria obtain food from the body of some other organisms. Such bacteria are called parasitic bacteria. Reproduction in bacteria Bacteria reproduce by binary fission. Under favorable conditions, the bacterial cell first grows in size. Its nuclear material and cytoplasm then divide to form two new daughter cells. The daughter cells grow in size and divide again. Most bacteria divide very rapidly. Under unfavorable conditions, each bacterium develops a thick cyst wall and forms an endospore. Now let's do a comparison between useful and harmful bacteria. Useful bacteria are used in making antibiotics for the treatment of infectious diseases. However, harmful bacteria cause diseases in plants and animals by producing poisonous substances called toxins. Useful bacteria are used in making food and beverages. Lactobacillus helps in fermentation of carbohydrate and helps in setting of curd. While harmful bacteria are responsible for causing typhoid, cholera, pneumonia, tetanus, leprosy, whooping cough, etc. in humans. Useful bacteria are used in jute and leather industry for processing and tanning. Harmful bacteria are responsible for causing citrus canker 
and wilt diseases in plants. The useful bacteria rhizobium helps in nitrogen fixation. While harmful bacteria are responsible for causing tuberculosis, anthrax and brucellosis in animals. Useful bacteria help in decomposition of biodegradable wastes, thus helping to clean the environment and produce compost. Harmful bacteria spoils food by producing toxins. Useful bacteria present in the intestine help to break down the food in humans and cellulose which is present in the digestive system of the animals such as goat, cow, etc. Harmful bacteria like Clostridium botulinium grows in canned food and causes a serious type of food poisoning.